Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I have a word from the Lord. 2 Peter verses 1, excuse me, 2 Peter chapter 1, starting at verse 3, on to 10, I believe, followed by Pat's Two Cents. <clears throat> According as his divine nature hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let me add a little Pat's two cents right in here. A lot of us, when we hear those words, divine nature, some don't really know what exactly that is. But when you are called by Christ, you, are, uh, you have given your heart to the Lord. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit does is he fills us with his new nature, the nature of God, the nature of love, truth, virtue, goodness, holiness, integrity, all of that. All right. Plus, <clears throat> which I will list later as I read. But a lot of times we think we can give our lives to the Lord and live the way we used to live. And we rationalize and excuse the sins and the can't help it. But one thing you have to look. Okay, look at this. Looking from a human standpoint, right? And then look at it from God's standpoint. If you're laying on an operation table and the surgeon walks in with last night's party clothes, and he's got the smell of liquor on his breath and sex on his body and is just spewing through the pores of his skin and his clothes. And he hasn't washed his hands. He hasn't sanitized. He hasn't done a thing. And he still has a hangover to boot. Would you jump up off that table? Well, how much more do you think God requires our holiness? We can't come to him and live for him and represent him any old way. No. All right. I'm done. I don't want to start preaching. I just want you to hear the point. So here's your new nature, right? So what happens is, hmm. <laughs> let me read verse four again, because I really want I really want you to hear it. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. You get it now having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, verse 5, And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance. Pat's two cents. Temperance is another form of self-control and to go above that virtue is another way of saying honorable okay moving right along now and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience and to patience godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity. Now, Pat's two cents. For those of you who don't know what charity is, charity, bottom line, is L-O-V-E, love. Now, when everything you do is motivated by love, 
You won't steal from your brother. You won't lie on your brother. You won't backstab your sister. You won't denigrate her in public. You won't disrespect and blow somebody off in public. You won't lay your hands on them. Mm. Now, I'm not talking about chastising children. Sometimes they need a little reinforcement, a little convincing. But I'm talking about adult to adult. There are things you won't do, you won't say, certain ways you won't act, certain, certain types of hurts you won't lay on them. If you are motivated by love, true love, not conditional love, you scratch my back, I scratch your back, you stab me, I stab you, not that, unconditional love. For if these be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather... Brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. All right. Now, one time I was sitting on the train and I heard these two guys arguing. One guy was a total stranger. The other guy was having a conversation with someone else and had alluded to the fact that they were a follower of Christ, right? And had been uh, living for the Lord for about maybe 15 years. All right. But the other guy was an ignoramus. He was what you would call an unreasonable fool. So he starts up an argument with the, the Christian guy. And when he starts arguing with the Christian guy, the Christian guy forgets what he just proclaimed right there in the train. And he reverts back to when he acted a fool. So instead of him cutting that conversation short and glorifying God, he lost his cool and started acting just as much of a fool as the fool was acting. So now you had two fools going toe to toe. Hmm, word for word. <laughs> it, was, it was so embarrassing. It was so embarrassing to see that. He had no self-control. Now, how did that happen? Most of the time, I'm sure that guy probably lived a holy life. But that day, Satan knew what kind of fool to push the right kind of button. And up jump Jack out the box. Now, can you imagine what effect that had on his witness that he had just given to the guy sitting next to him on the train? Hmm. Right. That's why we have to be prayed up. We have to be careful. When you know you're getting ready to step out of your house and you know you're getting ready to go into an unknown territory, it's best to pray yourself up. Make sure you've got that whole armor of God on. I don't care if you got to call the armor by name, but you ask God to fill you with love, temperance, patience, power to you, self-control, fill you afresh with his Holy Spirit, fill you with his peace, you cover yourself, baby, because there are fools and wolves out there waiting to pounce on you, drop your drawers, and show your narrow behind to the whole world. And they won't need much help if you're not prayed up because you will voluntarily show your own behind. You get me? Hmm. When was the last time you lost your cool and had to go tipping away with your tail tucked between your legs a little embarrassed because now you had to uh, apologize to God? 
for showing your rumpskins back there, showing your flesh when it should have been hidden under the cloak or under the covering of God's holiness. <clears throat> okay. Next point. I had a running buddy who was an excellent actor and he did not know how to speak to people. This was a person who, whose parents, and I fault the parents too, whose parents were at fault in that they did not teach, nurture, uh, develop this child when he was young. They let him run wild while they did their thing. So the boy literally raised himself, no structure, no nurturing, barely was taken care of. It was so bad that by the time he was 12 years old, he was living on the streets on his own. Now, as a grown man though, he entered the profession of a professional actor and was phenomenal, may I say. He had the gifting level of James Earl Jones, Denzel Washington, Sean Connery. You hear what I'm saying? The boy, the, I mean, he was tough. This guy was tough. All right. However, he did not know how to talk to people diplomatically. Instead of saying, excuse me, I'm having a private conversation, he would say something like, I wasn't talking to you. And he would be talking to a friend that he wasn't even angry with. Or he would say, uh, well, why don't you just shut up? If you don't know what to talk about, blah, 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 blah. Instead of saying, let's drop this subject, move on to something else. I mean, <laughs> and when I watched how he acted, I said to myself, that's what cheated him out of Grammys and Emmys and Oscars because he was at that level. He was at the, he was that caliber of a, of a, of an actor, phenomenal, powerful actor. But his attitude determined his altitude. And unfortunately he flew very low. So that's another case of not having self-control and not bearing much fruit. Think about it. Your mouth can make you or break you, baby. It depends on which spirit is in control, your flesh, the devil, or the Holy Spirit. But that decision always ends up being yours which means the ball will always be in your court. Mm. I don't care what somebody else does. I don't care if they cuss you out for nothing, for no reason. I don't care if they lie on you, if they jam you up in public. You can seal your lips and walk away. You do not have to engage. The devil says, let's fight, let's blow down. You can walk away, baby. You do not have to entertain a fool. Think about that. 